Hello everyone, I think we're live, awesome. Hi everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic Monday and wherever you are, it is sunny and the sun is shining bright uh, here in Squamish, BC where I live. The sun is gorgeous today and the spring weather has officially arrived, so I'm really excited for it. I'm welcoming spring in and I'm really excited to have that warmer weather here and I hope it stays. <laughs> we'll probably see some rainy days, I'm sure. Uh, but hopefully the sunshine lasts a long time. So my name is Elise. I'm the program director for Dolphin Kids Future Ready Leaders, and I am back for another Smart, Happy, Strong Kids Facebook Live event with the Stigma Free Society. So if this is your first time joining, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, in this uh, episode today, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the power of play and the, why play is important, why we should all play, kids, teens, and adults and the power that play has on our minds and our bodies and our social, emotional, and cognitive health as well. Uh, before I get started, I want to give a big shout out to the Stigma Free Society. Thank you so much for having me back on Facebook Live. Uh, hopefully my internet is good to me today. <laughs> if I cut out, I will come back. Um, but hopefully, fingers crossed, we don't have any of those problems today. Um, but if you are new to this Facebook Live event uh, and new to Stigma Free Society, uh, they are a Canadian registered charity that aims to reduce stigma of all kinds with a focus on mental health. They promote mental wellness education for youth while providing resources for educators, school counselors, and parents and guardians. The society's goal is to create awareness of the various stigmas that exist in the world, develop an understanding of challenges that numerous people face, and encourage people to foster acceptance of themselves and others. So if you want to learn more, continue to check out their Facebook page. Uh, they have lots of great resources and lots of other great Facebook Live events and other awesome videos that you can just find just on their social media. Um, or you can look on their website, stigmafreesociety.com as well. That's another great spot where you can find lots of their resources too. Okay, so um, today <laughs> we are going to again be talking about play. Uh, but before we get started, um, what I love to start off with is this a little bit of downtime. It's four o'clock, so for a lot of us that could be, you know, end of the school day, end of the work day. And so um, having a little bit of downtime and giving a chance to check in with yourself before you start a new activity is always a really great way to kind of settle in, um, get your brain into receptive learning mode, and get your body and mind ready to try something new. So what we're going to be doing to start off downtime is we're going to be doing an emotions check-in. So for this activity and for most of our activities that we do um, in this segment today is we are going to need some paper. If you have a couple sheets of paper, that'd be great. Um, I use a gratitude journal. If you have a journal as well, that's also handy. So you can kind of keep just using the paper in one journal. And maybe if you like something that you've done or activity you did in one of our past episodes, you can kind of just keep adding on to that journal of smart, happy, strong kids tools that you can use. Um, and then you can also, if you have markers or any type of writing utensils you buy nearby, you're going to need that as well. Okay. So for emotions check-in today, you've done this with me before. If you joined one of our Facebook live events before, I want you just to draw a circle. So we're going to be doing a little bit of a mood meter right now. Uh, a mood meter is where you're going to get a chance to check in with yourself and really kind of think about how you're feeling. This circle is going to represent our face and you're going to get a chance to draw and showcase how you're feeling today. Again, all the drawings that we do in this uh, Facebook Live event don't have to be perfect. Again, if you've seen some of my videos before, you will know that is very true, that <laughs> drawings don't have to be great. Um, but for this particular activity, what's really important is just taking a moment just to check in with yourself. So. Once you have a circle drawn, I'd love for you just to put it to the side. We're going to come back to that in just a second. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take three deep rainbow breaths. And then we're going to close our eyes and we're just going to take a chance to check in with ourselves. We're going to think about how we're feeling and we're going to then draw that emotion or how we're feeling into the circle, the face that we just created. Okay. So I'm sitting down, and so if you're sitting, you are welcome to stay um, in a seated, a seated sit position, um, or if you're standing, or if you're more comfortable standing, you're more than welcome to do that too. 
okay? I'm gonna say um, sitting down uh, for my rainbow breath. And if you are sitting, you're gonna just wanna put your hands by, flopped by your side. You just kinda like can flop them down. You can even wiggle your arms a little bit, get the wiggles out. Awesome, you can wave one arm up, one arm down. Okay, great, so just make sure your hands are by your side, awesome. And then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take a big, deep breath up. And exhale slowly down. Great, and you're gonna take two more, big inhale up. Exhale slowly down. And one more, your biggest breath of your day. Inhale up. And exhale down. Now what I want you to do is just bring your hands to your heart. Or you can even bring your hands to your head, <laughs> wherever you like. But we're gonna try with our hands on our heart. And what I would love for you to do is just close your eyes. You can take one more deep breath in through your nose. Slow exhale through your mouth. And I just want you to ask yourself the question, how am I feeling today? Think about maybe some positive things that happened in your day, maybe some things that weren't so positive. And how are you feeling at this moment? Okay, take one more deep breath in your, through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. And open your eyes. Okay, wonderful job. So great job doing a little bit of an emotions check-in, but now what I would love for you to do is I would love for you to draw that emotion. So in that circle you just drew, I would love for you to make this into a face. I want you to draw your emotion and I want you to um, tell me how you're feeling today or tell the parent next to you how you're feeling today. So think about how that first emotion when you ask yourself, how am I feeling? What was the first emotion that came to your mind? That is what I want you to draw in this face. So I'm gonna grab my markers too. I'm gonna give you a minute just to draw that. Again, your pictures don't have to be perfect. Even if you wanna take a few more seconds just to check in with yourself and really say, okay, how am I feeling today? Or what was something that really was positive today? Or what was something that made me feel not so great today? You can take an extra moment just to do that too. Um, but we're gonna draw now how we are feeling. And an extension you could do onto that is even putting a name to your emotion as well. So first go back to that circle and draw your face. How are you feeling today? How would you depict your mood in the circle that you created? I'm gonna go emoji style for the face I'm drawing. I think this is how the emoji face goes anyway. <laughs> um, and then the name I'd give my emotion is Okay, <laughs> this, is, this was my face. Another good description of how our uh, pictures don't need to be perfect. But I drew the star eyes emoji. You can also do another emoji if you'd like to. Um, but then the name I gave my emotion today is excited. Um, and the reason why I'm star eyes emoji is I kind of already gave it away in the beginning of the segment, but I'm super, I find my mood is really depicted on the weather, um, which is kind of interesting. I'm very in tune with I feel like my surroundings and nature and the weather and sometimes when it's really rainy and gloomy outside, I can feel really tired or feel like I kind of just want to curl up in a ball and watch a movie. Um, and when it's sunny like it is today and the weather's starting to get warmer in the 19s and 20s, 
I get really excited. I think see flowers and things starting to bloom outside um, and it just makes me really excited to either get back into nature um, and things like that as well. So the sunny weather is definitely getting me feeling excited and ready for the new season uh, that we have upon us. Um, so take a look at your face. What did you draw? What were some emotions or what emotion are you feeling right now? Or what emotion did you feel today? That first thing that came into your mind when you asked yourself, how am I feeling? That is what I want you to draw. So emotions check in as you're just finishing up. It's really great to do. Uh, you can do this at any time. You can do it in the morning. Um, sometimes uh, people who I know, they like to write down in the morning, especially before they go to work, or before they go to school, just how they're feeling. Sometimes when we can have a, just a moment to check in with ourselves, especially before we go to school or go to work, we're better able to kind of understand how we're going to approach certain situations. So for example, if you wake up feeling really tired and you're getting ready to go to school, you know, maybe something that happens to you at school is not going to set your day off right because you're not feeling the best already. So getting a chance to check in with yourself is super important, even before bed. Uh, you can kind of look at your highs and lows for the day. Things that went really well, things that didn't go well, and how did you react to those things that didn't go well is another thing you can really ask yourself. Or how did those things that did go well, and maybe things that didn't go well, how did that impact your mood? So really kind of understanding how our actions and our behaviors and our surroundings, they all really go hand in hand. And the way we react and the way we act in certain situations can really impact how we feel. So really understanding our emotions and how we feel can help us name it, but you can help us tame it. So understanding that, hey, I'm feeling excited right now because I love this weather. Um, I, my action to understanding that mood is I'm gonna go outside a little bit later and go in my garden. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that and that's gonna keep me feeling excited. So if you're already feeling good and you're already feeling great, that's wonderful uh, and I hope you are. Um, what is something you can do later to help you continue feel that way? If you're not feeling the best right now, that's okay. Those are normal emotions to all feel. But what is something that you can do to make yourself feel a little bit more positive? Or what is something that you can do to help you overcome an obstacle or a situation that you may have that's making you not feel the best? Maybe it's something that's a little bit constant, something that's you know bugging you or something that you can't uh, feel you can't overcome. So that could be even something you talk to a parent or a trusted adult about too. So look at your emotion, think of why you're feeling that way and how you can either keep feeling that way or how you can kind of change your mood a little bit later on. Awesome job. Share it with your, with your parent next by or nearby too. Um, and if parents, you have a chance to do an emotion check and I encourage you to share it with your child as well. Okay, we're gonna be talking today a little bit about the power of play. <laughs> uh, and who doesn't love to play? Uh, play is a really uh, important uh, aspect of our lives. Humans are highly social beings. Uh, we love to not only interact with each other, but we love things like exploration, um, body movement, exercise, um, different things that can really get us our curiosity and imagination going. Those are all things that play can bring us in our everyday lives. So play can look so different. And it's actually really cool to research on play. There's tons of different types of play. Uh, there's body movement play, storytelling play, there's social play, celebratory play, rough and tumble play, so object play. So there's lots of different play types. And understanding the types of play we enjoy um, can really help us understand how it can boost our imagination, our curiosity, our resiliency, and our adaptability. Play helps us really pivot and it helps us take risks. So when we try new sports or we try new games or activities with friends or family or even just on our own, uh, we're actually challenging our brain to make new connections. So we're putting um, different things together. So especially for object play, if you like playing with Lego and building, then maybe your type of play is object play or hands-on play. Maybe building um, towers out of blocks is something that you really enjoy doing. 
And if you really enjoy doing that, that's wonderful. Because when you're building and you're playing, you're being creative. And you're actually able to make new connections in your brain. You're solving problems. You're analyzing. You're making decisions. Um, but you're also better able to overcome obstacles. So if your building or your tower didn't go the way you want it to go on um, the first round, you can adapt. And you can be resilient by overcoming that and figuring out a way to make it the tower you wanted to build. Maybe moving a block here or there, or moving another piece here or there. Um, so really figuring out a way that you can play uh, to help yourself um, figure out how to solve obstacles and take risks, which is a really kind of great thing about play as well. So play is super powerful. Um, and sometimes we, as we get older, we think, hey, teens or adults, we can't play. Oh yeah, we can, <laughs> we can totally play. Um, and play is super important for um, us, even as children, but especially as we get older too. Um, play can look so different um, depending on what age you are um, and what you enjoy doing. Um, but play can really even stem to sports teams. So if you are really into soccer, or maybe you're really into mountain biking or skiing or snowboarding, maybe that's your type of play. So really understanding how play is important to you um, can really help you understand how you could add more play to your everyday life. So what we're going to do to start off is we're going to create a little play acrostic poem. And if you've done an acrostic poem before, one thing is it doesn't have to rhyme. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be a poem that rhymes. Um, but we're going to be using the word play and we're going to be thinking about the importance and power of play and how it can be really a positive impact on us. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the P, L, A, and Y. And we're going to be creating a little poem together about how play is powerful. And how we're going to do this, if you've done an acrostic poem before, you can use this letter as the first letter of the word, or you can add this letter into any, any of the words. So maybe P's in the middle of the word that you want to use. You can use that word still for sure. Um, you would just start the word over on this side as well. So we're going to brainstorm a little bit. I already kind of gave you some ideas on how play is really important, especially for our brains um, and making new connections, but also really important for our bodies and keeping our bodies strong and healthy. Um, and really also too, it helps us with our mental health. Play and exercise and getting a chance to get outside of nature is a really great way to help us get some downtime, which we kind of did in the beginning. It helps us check in with ourselves and helps us understand how we're feeling and it can help us boost our mood actually. Uh, by play, even just like 30 minutes of play a day, whether that be play with friends, play um, independently, whatever it may be, but doing something that you really enjoy and that you consider as a play type, um, it can help us boost our endorphins and serotonin, which in our brains helps us produce happy chemicals. So after a little bit of play, you can feel a little bit like this, again, the star emoji. Um, so it really helps us boost that feeling of happiness. Okay, another really kind of important piece of the power of play uh, that I already mentioned previously is being adaptable and help you solve problems, but it also can help you make social connections with other people. I remember some of the people um, that really made a positive impact in my life were on my basketball team when I was a child. Um, building those connections on team sports or even just building connections with people who do common play types with you, even just on the re on the playground, on recess. Uh, but you can, play can help you build social connections with other people and humans, again, are social beings. So those social connections are really important. So being able to play with other people can help us build those connections and help us make our relationships even stronger. All right, so we just kind of went over a little bit of the power of play. Now we're gonna kind of think about how play is important to us by making an acrostic poem. So on a piece of paper, you can even do it on the back of your um, emotion check in if you like, just to save some paper. But what I would love you to do is I would love you to write the word play. And we're gonna brainstorm a little bit on what we could write for this acrostic poem. If you already have some ideas, you are more than welcome to write those down now. 
if you want to follow along with me and kind of just write down what I write down as we talk it out, you're welcome. Um, so, but it's entirely up to you. If you already have some ideas, if you're already kind of playing in your mind with some creative inspiration you have going on what words you can use to describe play to yourself, you're more than welcome to do that. You can even write them in the chat box if you'd like to. Um, we would love to see that as well. Okay, so what we are going to do first is start with the letter P. Okay, I'm going to use just use a different color. I did my play in blue, so I'm just choosing a different color to write out the words just so they stand out a little bit more. So when I think of play in the letter P, um, what comes to my mind is pretty great exercise. So depending on what play you do, it can be pretty great exercise. I love to play in the mountains, actually. Uh, that is where I get my most amount of play. I love hiking, I love biking, I love just being outside in nature, and I find that when I play, um, and I do the types of play that I really enjoy, sometimes it can be a really great exercise for my mind and for my body as well. Okay, L. So now we're on the L for our play acrostic poem. What comes to my mind for L is lots of fun. Especially when you're doing play with some um, other people, it can be a lot of fun being able to connect and play Sometimes play can be frustrating too, uh, but that's kind of a great thing for us to kind of overcome and realize as well is that when we play, sometimes things don't go our way. So it really helps us kind of, you know, build that resilience again, build that adaptability, but also see how far we can go with our creativity, our imagination and our skills as well. So when you're playing, you're building tons of different skills. Okay. Now we're on the A. So again, if you have any suggestions, feel free to type them into the chat box. Maddie, I'm looking at you. If you have any suggestions at all, feel free to type them in. Okay, so we have P, pretty great exercise. L, lots of fun. Okay, and then we have A. So I'm going to say... write it closer. Okay, so I put imaginary. You can mind my mistake here, but imaginary. Imaginary play is a wonderful type of play that you can do if you like drama, if you like pretend games, um, if you like uh, playing and kind of building an imagination, imagining you're in an, a rocket ship, um, or building and, and creating something with your imagination, then you might enjoy imaginary play. Maybe that's the type of play that you really enjoy doing. Okay, and then why? Why can sometimes be a tricky letter to find a word, but I'm gonna say yells of joy. <laughs> kind of like screams of joy. Uh, but sometimes, when you play, you scream and you yell or you have fun, you're laughing, you're joking around, you're having a good time with friends or family. Um, so play can be a really great, again, a booster of laughter, which again can increase your mood and it can help you feel happier, more excited, uh, more ready to take on the day. Okay, so here's our acrostic poem. P, pretty great exercise. L, lots of fun. A, Imaginary, imaginary play, and using your imagination is a type of play that you can do. And then why? Yells of joy. Kind of like screams of joy. <laughs> um, but if you had some other words uh, that you put in your acrostic poem, I would love to hear them as well. Um, you can always comment on this video, or you can send Stigma Free Society a message, or if you have, your parents have social media, we would love to see what you create. You could always take a picture and share it with us on uh, social media or Instagram or Facebook. 
at Stolfing Kids Achievement and at Stigma Free Society as well. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to at least think or write down uh, your acrostic poem, but I have one more exercise we're going to do before we end off with our mantra. And for this exercise, what I really want you to think about is what type of play do you enjoy? So I mentioned some types uh, previously, such as body movement. So that for me is one of my play that I really enjoy. Again, that's where I get that great exercise in. I feel good. So body movement play could be anything moving your body, running, jumping, biking, playing soccer, anything you do that gets your body moving. Another type of play is storytelling play. So if you love drama, if you love acting, if you love uh, doing, um, you know, having different characters in your storylines, even if you like creating stories or playing with different ideas and the stories you can create, that is another great type of play as well, storytelling play. Imaginary play can go along with that too. Again, if you like drama or pretending to be certain characters as well. And then we have rough and tumble play. Uh, rough and tumble play is um, more, uh, again, body type, type of body movement play, but rough and tumble play is really important. It helps you kind of really, you know, set your limits and boundaries with other people, uh, but also gets you your body moving and it helps you be, build your resilience and adaptability skills. Um, we also have object play or hands-on play. So that is when you're building with blocks or you're building different things. So what I want you to do right now is I want you just to think, what types of play do you really enjoy? Okay? And I want you to brainstorm two types of play that you find are really beneficial to you. Okay? What do you love to do? Especially on a sunny day like today, what are some things that you would love to do for play? Would it be more building? Would it be going outside and moving your body? Would it be hiking? What would you like to do? So on the back of my play across a poem, I'm going to take another piece of paper and I'm just going to split it into two sections. Like so. And what I want you to do is I want you to think of a type of play that you really enjoy. And I want you to draw yourself doing that. So I, again, I'm just going to change my color here. For me, I'm going to put down body movement because that is one of the play types that I really enjoy. So in my first section, I'm putting body movement. And then I'm also going to draw a couple things I love to do for body movement play. Okay, so a couple things I do for body movement play is hiking and biking. Those are two of my favorite body movement plays. Now the second category I'm going to put down is, hmm, I'm going to say social play. I really like doing play that I can connect with other people. And that's super important, especially right now. Um, connecting with other people and finding safe ways we can play with each other outside um, is really, really important. So what I love to do um, for social play is things like, I don't know if anyone's heard of the game Spikeball, but that game's pretty fun. And also love just walking. Walking with people is kind of a nice way to have social play. You're able to talk and socialize. This is my spike ball picture. <laughs> awesome. So finding ways that you can still interact and play with other people, but that ways that are still safe. Uh, safe for you and safe for others as well. So 
think about the types of play that you enjoy. What types of play are you maybe going to engage in today? And I challenge you to try to do these types of play for the rest of the week. That is correct. Your challenge this week is to play. And I would love for you to play as often as you can. Parents, that goes for you too. Uh, try to get a chance to play even together. Find a common play type that you and your child can do together and really kind of have fun with it and, and make a play challenge at your house this week. And one of those challenges too, I encourage you to play outside um, and get outside as much as possible. That is where sometimes all the imaginary play comes out. Awesome. So thank you so much for participating with me today. We're just gonna end off with our Dolphin Kids mantra. So I would love everyone just to take a deep breath up. And you're gonna bring your hands to your head. And you're gonna say, I'm smart. Bring your hands to your heart and say, I'm happy. And show me your muscles and say, I'm strong. Awesome job. And play can help you even become stronger. So again, challenge for the week is make sure you play. Awesome. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Uh, thank you, Stigma Free Society, for having me. And I hope everyone has a wonderful week. I'll talk to you soon.